All right, uh, I want to make a brief statement this morning. Um, during the course of the um, hearings yesterday, not a single question was asked about the, uh, the case, about the allegations against the former ambassador, against the president of Pakistan, uh, against the people that are responsible for asking me to convey the memorandum in the first place. Now, um, I think it's time to put an end to the charade that is going on here. So this morning, I want to tell the people of Pakistan that when their prime minister, Yusuf Raza Jalani, tells the world that he will not write the letters to the Swiss government to reopen the corruption cases against his uh, boss or his colleague, if you will, in the Pakistan People's Party, President Zardari. Uh, he's doing that because they have something very serious to hide. And I'm now going to make available for the rest of the world to see the entire set of documents. Uh, these are one set of documents that demonstrate exactly what it is that the government of Pakistan, the president of Pakistan, has been trying to hide. The reason that this memorandum case is so dangerous for them is because if it is found that Mr. Haqqani ordered the memorandum as he did, if it is found that his boss is the one, President Zardari, who asked him to do it, the president would be stripped of his immunity and he would lose office, probably because there would be a treason case registered against him. The reality is that the reason that they want to prevent and protect themselves against that treason case being registered and at all costs and that's why they continue to assassinate my character, threaten my children, threaten my family, threaten me in every way possible. It is because they are absolutely hell-bent on trying to protect this kind of information that is contained in those Swiss cases from coming out. Now, I, I'm going to, th these documents are in French. They are in part uh, redacted uh, from the, or, or I should say, have been taken from uh, the actual findings of the investigating judge. The way these French systems work is they have one round of judicial inquiry that deals with collection of evidence, with the analysis of the evidence, and to try and understand what that evidence means. That is what this, these set of documents refer to, and these documents contain the names of Mr. Schlegel Melch, of uh, uh, the uh, names of the company, Bomer Finance, they contain uh, the, um, uh, shall we say, the deal that was cut with SGS and Kotechna. Uh, they contain uh, the names of Mr. Robert Massey, Mr. Hans Fischer, the president of Pakistan, Mr. Asif Ali Zardari, who at that time was the husband of the former prime minister, uh, uh, God, God be with her, Benazir Bhutto. Now, when you read these documents carefully, and I hope all of you guys have people that can translate French, um, you, and this, by the way, I want you to see that it's under the signature, the signature of the investigating magistrate uh, that these documents have been submitted. These are directly from the Swiss authorities, right? Swiss magistrates. That's correct. Well, let me, let, let me tell you one other thing before we go on. So, I want the people of Pakistan to see this document. So this is a handwritten ledger of a UBS account in which Mr. Asif Ali Zardari and the former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto and others that they were working with, Mr. Schlegel Milch, Mr. Massey and so forth, had kept ledgers of all the monies that were coming out of these uh, deals in the form of corruption monies that were being paid. They show the amounts of the commissions, they show the ins, the outs, down to the last penny. They show the movements into the account, millions into the account and out of the account. This is what the people of Pakistan should know today, is the reason that they are so hell-bent on trying to prevent the truth from coming out. Whether that truth is in the form of the Swiss cases, whether that truth is in the form of what is contained in that memorandum, whether that truth is in the form of what happened on the night of May 2nd, which they have also not told the truth about. The reality is that the people of Pakistan have a right to know this. I made a commitment when we started this process that I would speak truth to power. I am now speaking that truth as loudly as I can. At the risk of my own life, I'm going to speak that truth as loudly as I need to until the president of Pakistan, until his gang of bandits that have stolen the money of the people of that country 
are ready to come clean until Mr. Rahman Mullick comes clean with the money that he is also holding. Until everybody comes clean with what they've done, they've got me to answer to. If they don't want to answer to their own people, they're going to have to answer to me. Thank you very much. Uh, that's my question, please. Uh, what's the two, 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 two oh, only one question. Yeah. Uh, please yeah. tell me that what's the relation between the memo, your memo, and the Swiss case? Is yeah. there any relation? The, the, the relationship is very simple, and that's something that nobody in Pakistan has been willing to answer or listen to. The memorandum, if it is proven that Mr. Haqqani asked me to do it, and the president of Pakistan is the one who gave him the instruction, it would potentially strip the president of Pakistan of his immunity. His immunity being stripped reopens these Swiss cases. I'm now showing the people of Pakistan what is contained in part in the investigating magistrate's findings in those Swiss cases. And later today, I'm going to make available to everybody a document from the United States Senate Subcommittee on Money Laundering, none less than money laundering, in which John Reed, the former Citibank chairman, himself made very clear comments about what Mr. Zardari was doing at that time. It contains the amounts that were put in the accounts. It contains the amounts that were taken out of the accounts. All of that information exists. The people of Pakistan now have to go back and review the evidence. They need to have their attorney general put the, 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 the blame where it squarely belongs and investigate these cases. If these allegations are untrue, Mr. Zardari has perfect opportunity to go and redress himself, but he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to write this, these letters. He doesn't want his prime minister to write these letters because they cannot afford to challenge. They cannot afford to face what that truth is. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm going to leave these copies with you. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank